Have we got a have we got a script have we today? <laughs> script. I tell you what. What do you think this is? Professional? <laughs> You're listening to the Kung Fu Podcast presented by James Still. I don't care if it's Mohammed, Imard, Bruce Lee. And Steve Newby. This is the original five fingers of death right here. But my hands are registered as lethal weapons. That means we get into a fight, I accidentally kill you, I go to jail. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Kung Fu Podcast with me James Still and uh, the venerable old man. Steve Newby in Canada. How you doing, Steve? That's me. Yeah, good. <laughs> that's you. <good. laughs> what, it's not been great weather today. It's uh, been rainy. It just oh, is it? <clears throat> yeah. You mean you have bad weather in Canada? This uh, this doesn't sound like yeah. the Canada you keep telling me about. Well, I'll wait till summer. <laughs> when you're going to be uh, sat in your rubber ring, drifting down the lakes, you know? Oh, down the down the river. Yeah, they have this uh, river run, and you can just everybody takes a massive ring. We've got this thing. It's like a big rubber pirate ship with a big parrot on it. And it's, mm. uh, it's you know, you can have about six to eight people on it. That's how big it is. And you just stick it on a, you stick it on the river and it takes about four hours to go from one lake to the other, just floating down this river. Everyone does it. Just, you know, they will take the beer, but they have to stick it in um, pop cans and, you know, oh, okay. pop bottles because it's illegal to drink in public. Oh right, like that. So they all take it in pop cans, and everyone ignores them anyway because they're only on the river. And they're not going to fall over anywhere. Oh, well, that's what's the, the the worst they can do is drown <laughs> in about six inches of water. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can ice yeah. skate on those lakes uh, in 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 winter. On the lakes, oh yeah, yeah, on the yeah. lakes you can. Not on the river so much. Yeah, the rivers. Okay. Okay. It's just that one lake's slightly higher than the other one so the river runs from one to the other oh okay all right happy days it's hey, in hey, Pentic hey. penticton right penticton super mm. duper smashing great we're we'll talking about canadian trucks next hang on right we've got to we've got to start talking about some kung fu um mm. we're we're on a bit of a buzz because we've just come we've just literally finished doing a reaction video to yes bad our first reaction class. video oh my god so, well it's it's the bad people in martial arts, really. Well, it's yeah, but it's more specifically <laughs> to do with Lao. Like we, we yes, you know, it's uh, yes. people doing bad Lao. So you know. Yeah, well, I was asked to uh, to criticise somebody. I mean, I don't, I got no problem with critique either way. You know, it's it's not it's, it's going to have a good reason, and this mm. one had a damn good reason. Oh yeah. So you know, when you teach, when you profess to teach uh, a style, then you, you could at least learn it um, and be qualified to teach it and. Uh, this one is is not you know I know him well, and uh, he he kind of uh, well calls himself a master, forty years of experience, and um, Ooh, which don't... makes him about nine when he became started training. <laughs> I guess. Don't call yourself a master, please. Mm. For the love of God, please don't call yourself a master. So what you'll prob what we'll put out is going to be like the heavily edited version and that's and i would call it the polite version but <laughs> i didn't swear no well you didn't know but uh uh it was quite funny um right so oh talking about funny people i got some yeah see if you can guess who i'm talking about and so i'm going to give you i'm going to read out some sort of in quotation marks facts all right and i want you all i want you to do is just try and guess who it is but you know let, let me finish them first all right mm -hmm. okay so this person 
holds an MBA degree. He owns land, property, and businesses in over 40 different countries. Okay, drives a $100,000 car. Yeah, receives, frequently re receives lavish and expensive gifts. Okay, um, has been accused of soliciting prostitutes and allegedly extorted money from his employees to pay them. Any guesses so far? Yeah. Go on, who? Uh, it's the abbot at Charlottetown. <gasps> oh, you went straight in there. Yes, it was. Hang on, I haven't finished yet. It was, it is the abbot. That's Shi, Shi Yong Zin, the current abbot, right? So also, okay, supports the demolition of local villages in order to further his businesses yeah has been accused multiple times of sexual assault and his business ventures include hotels and golf courses <laughs> and he's deeply embedded with politics do you know i thought you were going to go on a tirade about donald trump i was like no that's that's the <laughs> abbot that's the abbot of the shaolin temple the you know can you believe that mm. that's shocking yeah well when i went to shaolin they had i went to the um pagoda forest where all the old abbots had you know buried yeah. the, the original monks of the temple mm. and uh, right there it made of concrete rather than bricks which the other ones are made of pagodas made of bricks yeah. and the, the, the size of them depends would dictate the the importance of the you know the person buried there yeah and uh, theirs was his and it was um, it had like airplanes on it and trains and wow. all that sort of thing on it <laughs> and uh, made of concrete yeah. waiting for him to die wow wow yeah they uh, they call him like the ceo monk because you know he's like mm. you know he's really tried to proliferate the shaolin like uh, throughout the world that you know mm. like because you had that wheel of life thing and you know all this and that and the other and all yeah well that stuff. was too that was the british people that sort of got that together yeah but they needed the, the support of, of yeah the, 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 obviously it's business venture isn't it was it british oh, no people doubt, yeah. was it i didn't realize yeah that. yeah mm. Oh, just having a cup of tea. Yeah, no. Yeah, I've really got anything. coffee. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna need it. Um. So, what else? What can we talk about? Because I don't know what we're gonna talk about. What do you want to talk about? I've got some some questions I could ask you. I, I've got a I've got an inside source. Did you know this? Uh, no, I didn't know. Oh yeah, I didn't know an inside, an source, inside from source. What? And I've got mm. some. Uh, some correspondence are you eating again no, no every week no. i have to tell you you're eating because look Sorry. if you're going right. to eat at least close your mouth when you're eating because all i can hear is you chomp 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 the, well, the podcast <sighs> right okay sorry <laughs> sorry listen you're uh, how long you've been doing now? um i was 21 i'm 62 now right so that's what 40 one years one yeah. 41 yeah. years you're and, and i was that's genuine 41 genuine years of training uh -huh. right then so i'm going to ask you some questions right about the laugar syllabus okay because mm. my uh, my source has come mm -hmm. through with some info right mm -hmm. and i've got some i've got some uh, some descriptions of moves in laugar right and I want you to try and guess which set they're from, right? So I'm going to read out. Let me finish reading out, all right, the descriptions of these techniques, and we'll see if you can identify the the form, the set that they come from. Is that all right? You're gonna you have to channel your uh, inner Alan Turing here, okay? So switch it on, <laughs> right? Hey, the Enigma yeah. machine ain't got shit on this, I tell you. Right, you ready? <laughs> okay, yeah. right. So guess the set, but let me read him out first, all right? Okay back step silk winding hand okay fierce tiger comes out of cave bell drum together and the boy salutes buddha which set if you had to guess would they come from come on <laughs> which set <laughs> oh, i don't know would that be far tuned <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> That was from Back by Joe, right? Come on. Back 41 Back years. You didn't know Boy okay, Salutes right. Buddha. Boy Salutes Buddha, old yeah. man. Right. Does he? Yeah, he no, does. Yeah, okay. right. Okay, so next set, all right? So remember, let me finish. I can see I'm not going to have any joy with this, and I think right. we better call oh, Alan Turing. They get better. They get better. 
Well, good luck. I mean, I think he's in a different realm now, but we'll see. Yeah, um, I did used to go to a club in Bletchley Park. <laughs> Well, it was in Bletchley Leisure Centre. It's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. It wasn't that far from Bletchley Park. Oh, Milton right. Keynes. Well, you know, bloody hell. <laughs> if the Nazis had this, maybe they'd have won the war, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, hang on. Right, what set are these, are these descriptions of moves from, OK? Hmm. Floating cloud, hand, ten, word, palm. I'll repeat that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll repeat that again because, you know, I'm... I'm I'm struggling. Floating cloud, hand, ten, word, palm. Next one. Step up, ten, word, palm. No, no clue. I got well, one more. One more. Open door, look at mountain. Any idea what set that those are from? I got to look up Q. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's I'm from, just stabbing. You're stabbing. <laughs> a stab in the dark. I'll have a stab in the dark. No, that was Fatal G. Right? Okay, right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What? Did you, did you open the door? Open the door? Open? I open, wouldn't open a door like that. Door I'd have opened the door like... The <laughs> like you know, in Logo Love with you, when you put your hands back and you push them out sideways, yeah. I thought maybe you'd be opening the door there. No, that's that's you know I don't know what that is. That's reaching for the toilet paper on both sides of the wall. <laughs> Didn't you know? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. What 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 set is this is this move from? There's only one. This is going to be the last one now, no, James. No, 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 no. It's it's yeah. it's not the last one. I'm only humouring you. Okay. All right. All right. Right. <laughs> what sets this from? Homage to Buddha. Oh my God. I'll give you a clue. Right. Oh wait a minute! Is wait. that is that all I get? Yeah, yeah, that's all you get. That's all you get. That's the one thing. Like, homage to Buddha. Or, well, you know, if if you're hip, you can say homage, homage, homage. But homage, right? Homage to Buddha. I'll give you a clue. Homage to Buddha three times. Homage to Buddha three times. Yeah. What's that from? I've got to hurry, yeah. <laughs> John Sow. Yes! Oh, it's John Sow. That's right. That's that. That's Since cool. when do you do this wrist movement round yeah. three times? And that's a homage. Homage. <laughs> homage. homage. That's an homage to Buddha, is it? Apparently, it is. Yep. So you're putting your hand out, then you're rotating <laughs> it round and bouncing, going out with the wrist, but then you're. That the homage to Buddha is just putting your right hand out, is it? Or left Listen, hand, whatever. You. you hey. You've been doing it longer than me. You tell me. I'll tell you one thing, right? What? If you if you want to learn a set by learning all those things, first of all, you will need Bletchley Park, right? <laughs> Secondly, you're only ever going to learn one move because you're going to do the move in the perception that... I mean, I like things like Monkey Plucks the Peaches and Twin Dragon in Search of Pearls. I like that. Because that's twin twin dragon. That's the two fingers poking someone in the eye, and the monkey monkey plucks peaches. You can imagine what that is, <laughs> okay? But and they actually describe you doing something. They don't describe a story that doesn't necessarily collate to everybody. Now, okay, I understand that a teacher may teach using these things, and then the student might learn using those things, but it doesn't give the student any more preference or um, ability to learn what is in between the beginning of the move and the end of the move. Remember that just because you make a move doesn't mean it's an A to a B. It's an A, B, C, D, E, F, E, depending on how long the move is. Because mm -hmm. there are so many different ways you can use that move and so many different positions that you can use that move. that the end product the end position doesn't necessarily mean a thing yeah it's the same as a punch just a punch if you do a straight punch does the end of the punch mean anything because you should have hit him while your arm was still bent so right. all the end of the punch is doing is demonstrating that's how long your arm is in other words you never slow down you keep the technique going all the way through right but by the time it reaches the end, it should have already done its job. Okay. So therefore, if you profess to give the end name a, a title, 
right. you've missed the journey. Yeah. So you've just concentrated so, on the the end, if you yeah. like. You just said, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So many of those many of those things, although they're they're quaint and they're they're nice and they're poetic, well, they they yeah. basically will give you uh, to a certain extent an idea. It's like um, what we were talking about the other day when you're uh, grinding the corn. Yeah, right yeah. grinding the corn so you're acting as if you were pulling a lever round and round and round on a on a, a wheel that would grind corn okay now how many people do that today yeah yeah right so they're not if you say to someone right grind the corn they'll go oh, where's the where's the button <laughs> so most techniques today will be a thumbprint you know will be a thumb going sticking it out in the air the thumb you know grind the corn uh, make make the bread yeah. put the button on you, you, you know turn you, the telly on I, I, the <laughs> you know so you have I, I do understand yet. how quaint it is I do understand well, it really is it's listen, a nice thing listen, but I haven't finished yet I haven't oh, finished God, it. Okay. You haven't heard the best one yet. The best oh. ones, all right? You ready? Right. Last one now, I promise. Last one. Yeah. Okay. All right, so again, what set are these from? Okay, let me finish them. Right. Soft rope, dry garment. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Raise torch to burn sky. Pan bird spreads wings. And these two might give it away. Spiritual leopard snatches food spiritual leopard jumps ravine <laughs> go on is that loud girl look up cute that is loud girl look up cute well huh. done see old man noobs that your 41 years has served you well well you know i mean in the tiger fork form yeah the the, the tiger stretches its back mm. right the little things you can remember earlier on you know so um, that's I guess that's one way of doing it but honestly for me uh, and it, it won't be for everybody because I'm sure there's a lot of people that would love that they think it's quaint and they think it, it makes them um, more of a martial artist by by understanding the Chinese uh, proverbs or Chinese culture and and that's absolutely fine you know, if that's the way you want to approach martial arts that's that's good my I'm um, uh, I don't know. Um, I, I'm into the physicality of it. I'm into the science of it, the principles. And so, you know, I, I do understand that people say, well, if you don't know those, you can't learn. Well, I'm sorry. I'd get begged to differ. Because, you know, is it not you the, don't have to is, yeah, quote it, those things when yeah. you're hitting someone. Is it not just a very, it, because we're dealing with the Chinese martial art and the Chinese culture to a certain extent, is it not that we are it's it's harking back to a time when descriptive words you know yeah. were, were used prolifically i mean english language has changed throughout the years obviously mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. but of course we understand that the chinese language is very sort of there's a lot of different meanings and you know, yeah but you see uh, everything in the past was like that everybody around the world talked like that yeah. in england until about the 13th century or maybe later they would talk in rhyme and the reason they were talking rhyme is because there were no commas and full stops because right. no one had bloody invented them yet right right until the 17th century there wasn't a zero right so mathematics was kind of awkward <laughs> yeah so until these these things are developments of you know cultures mm. over a period of time and of course you have the same thing in england with ring a ring a roses a pocket yeah, full of yeah. posies depicting the black death yeah, yeah. Now, and then you know so many different you know yeah. um verses and so many different even carols christmas carols to you know create little stories about uh you know religion right. you know there are so many different ways of portraying it because because you don't read or you can't read because there was no material for you to read and there was no time for you to read because by the time you finished work you'd, you'd be reading by candlelight if you were lucky if you could afford a candle then then basically you know most people didn't read so they would pass on information like this yeah. and of course that would be exactly the same in china yeah they still have a sun going down they still have candles you know mm. uh, or oil lamps 
So, you know, depending on how much you can afford. So, so even great masters and, and thinkers would have thought in the same way and given those kind of, you know, um, dictatorials, yeah. if you like, is, to try to make people remember their stuff. When, when is, is it just a personal preference with you that you don't like this and you prefer the physicality of martial arts as opposed oh, to yeah, a lot it's, of the, it, Yes, the it's only my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, what I mean is like, this is, this, in my opinion, this is quite nerdy, but it kind of appeals <laughs> to a certain side of me. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and it does to me too. I, I, I do like... The way people say that, mm. I do like the, the, to hear those things, but, but we do get confused. It's not going to do with, anything. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We do, we do get very confused with, you know, the, the, the mysticism and the the esoteric side of kung fu as opposed uh -huh. to the actual physical application of it. And 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 this is where your gripe is. I think am I am I kind of right there? Yeah, and and the other thing is, of course, you know, we're still talking about the animals, the five animals. Um, there's a five animal set which I've you know I learned twice and forgotten because it's not part of the syllabus and my intent is to learn you know learn the moves from it most definitely but I don't need to practice a big long form like that in order to do martial arts I do, you know the, the shorter the forms the reason Lao is so short and the reason it's no good in you know when when they do things like uh, the nationals and everybody comes out with bloody wushu sets and oh. tai chi sets oh. the reason it's not used there is because they can't compete with the the fluidity and the beauty of much longer sets but that's all they are beautiful and fluid but the, uh, half the time people you watch them they haven't even got a clue what they're doing with those movements right. even if they're holding a sword they don't even know what they're doing with it so it, it's it's really important for me mm. To, to promote Lao because Lao is known as an ugly style because it's not meant well, to look pretty. But who said it's an ugly style? It, that's just how it's known. It's known as an ugly style because it's not meant to be, you know, portrayed as, as pretty. Yeah. It's meant to yeah. be hidden. It's meant to be secret. It's a, right. it's a secret society style, for God's sake. Yeah. So consequently, the sets are very short. Why are they short? Because you can practice them it's 10 so times by someone. By the time someone's finished one of those long forms, mm -hmm. you've practiced your own techniques 10 times yeah. and you've probably gone to dinner at the same time. <laughs> so it's it's that's why lao appeals to me because you can do when i was training when i was like um i went i went to live in milton Keynes, um mm. and i had a job in milton Keynes, and I, I used to go out in a truck and but the truck had no bed in those days it didn't have a bed so i had to use i used to share my cab with a bloody big alsatian called dexter yeah. and my my love of my life i have to say and um he would sleep in the, on the floor well and i would sleep across i had to turn the, the the gear stick around as if i was lifting the cab so that i can actually have a bed and then sometimes we'd sleep in the back right and in the back that's all i would do was train that's all i would do i you know and or i'd get out and i'd do it in the car park where i parked yeah. uh, overnight because i had nights out in the in the truck yeah. so i'd just do constantly practice in in the car park or in the back of the truck and of course when you've got like nice sides of the truck a taut liner like a uh, canvas sides or yeah. plastic sides nowadays you would be punching them like crazy and kicking the, the sides of those trucks i don't know what people must have thought <laughs> they must have thought there was a fight going on inside no, no, the no. truck yeah. they walked past someone who's <laughs> smuggling the immigrants you know yeah <laughs> they're, they're kicking That's... off they want to get out <laughs> yeah I, I was lying in the truck one day i know i'm going off on a tangent here Go i was on. lying in the truck one day on cardboard boxes you know the, the remaining delivery and uh, the dog was lying there nice asleep suddenly there was this noise at the back and, and the, the door opened up slid open and the dog sat up and just all his teeth were everywhere you know dr yeah. dripping you know you can imagine oh he was, he was a fantastic guard dog and he and he just looked up and looked straight down at the door as it opened and a big torch came in and this policeman was there with this torch he says yeah, yeah, ha, 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 ha. He started sweating is this your truck uh, uh, well yeah and so boom, straight down the door quick as he could <laughs> tell you what I've, I've i've seen people run into the middle of the bloody road trying to avoid my dog the, the sort of hung out the side of the truck when they got too close to it mm -hmm. uh, it was amazing but that's we digress that's the, the point is training everywhere training in the truck mm -hmm. very short stand very short um sets allowed me to practice them as often as i liked mm -hmm. and, yeah. and 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 i i am all about the 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 basic syllabus 
everything beyond the basic syllabus you know the weaponry is obviously uh, traditionally taught and maintained and it's not just simply because we're going to get outside and start throwing a sword around or a, throw a spear at somebody it's simply because it's, it, it maintains the history and that for them for me is the history so those things yeah, I maintain I, I, I and they are very useful yeah. as well because people they've let them die off because they think oh well we're never going to use that weapon outside so what's the point in practicing it yeah. well because they didn't know the detail of it because they didn't know the essence of the this or the spirit of that if you like of that uh, weapon they they couldn't benefit from the the stances and the steps in yeah. heavy weaponry obviously when you throw a heavy weapon you've got to know where your feet are otherwise yeah. you ain't going to be able to catch it yeah. or pick it up or use it or, or throw it you know swing it so that's what the weapons are for but but as far as the style is concerned the first seven sets are all you need yeah, after that, that yeah all those big ones they've just been added the, but 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 you know some people might confuse your sort of attitude to to train the basics with well that's all he knows don't you know do, he don't know much about weaponry and whatnot and well, I, I just told him I know all the bloody weaponry yeah, well, I, I, can, <laughs> I, I can I sustain the, the weaponry detail. for that very yeah. reason yeah. yeah but the detail you have talking about swords you know with me the, the other day was you know yeah. is and I know about King Kong but 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 I don't I don't want listen I what mean, you do I, with I, primates is your own business. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I respect people who want to learn these additional forms until I watch their small forms right. until I watch their Lao forms yeah. and then when I watch their Lao forms they better be bloody good at them yeah. because if they're not they've got no excuse because they go out they learn these big flamboyant forms and after that you know they learn another one and then another well it's great it's a nice way of learning maybe it's their way of learning but for me you know understand that the, the the amount of possibilities there are with the small forms mm. i mean let's look at it okay we can look at it another another point of view let's look at it from an mma fighter right and an mma fighter decides he's going to you know, punch a bag do some skipping punch some pads and he's going to learn several techniques which are going to you know get him specific to his um his way of training his way of fighting yeah. his his build his weight his speed his his attitude towards it his his perseverance you know and and you tell him then oh you know now you've learned all that why don't you just go and then start learning uh, you know this kind of movement and that kind of movement and that kind of movement mm -hmm. what's he going to say to you he's going to say you know thanks but no they might learn it but then you'll go well it's all it's doing is taking me away yeah from the skill i have in the in the basics yeah because without the basics what do you have you you look great but you know yeah. what are you going to use those things yeah. are you going to actually use them have you ever seen anybody have you ever watched a a tai chi match from the the 50s and the 60s in china where where two martial artists get together and one does tai chi and the other one does some other martial art whatever I've some seen, other kung I've fu. Seen a few of the old rooftop fights yeah that's right and then and does it look like tai chi does it buggery I tell no you what. it doesn't they just it, swing at each other yeah wah, 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 and they're falling over bloody the, the you know the, yeah. the, the rooftop you know obstacles yeah. and all that it, it, it looks least like kung fu you could ever make but they're trying exactly. to hit each other they're trying to hit each exactly other. so i rest my case that's what they're trying to do they're trying to use the most primitive techniques to strike each other yeah. because all the rest goes out the window now we don't train and and i do appreciate the preservation of these long forms i understand that and and, I, and if people want to do it that's fine but i for me i like the idea of scientific strategies of, of self-defense I don't I'm not a fighter I don't particularly I'm not interested in going into a ring at my age anyway I've done a little bit of sparring did a little bit of competition and got some world champions as well because I can coach it but I'm not capable personally of jumping into a ring so why should I practice those things so the, the point for me is my preservation my self-defense and the preservation of people who want to learn preservation from me and if they if i can if i can have and i, and I have had this if I, if I have someone come up to me a student who goes last night a guy tried to uh, he, he broke a, a pool pool cue on the table tried to attack me with it right yeah. so i panned him 
you know, knocked him out, put him on the ground, panned him completely. Another girl comes to me, she says, you know, I did Taekwondo for years. This this bouncer tried to grab hold of me. Says all I did was this this move, and she showed me the move at the first set. Yeah. She says, and it was enough. <clears throat> says, she says, I never even thought about doing Taekwondo. I never even considered it. Why? Because no confidence in it. Yeah. So you develop students to have confidence in the capabilities that they have. But of course, having confidence is one thing. Having capability is another. So. Confidence is, comes from the instructor developing the, the techniques, but the training has to be the student. A hundred percent has to be the student, but they've got to be they've got to be aware of what direction their training is going in. And and, yes. and if we if we just look at what we've just been talking about, I mean, if you're training this set, that set, this set, that set, and you are clouding your training, uh, you know, uh, mind, if you like, with, with so many different things, you're forgetting the basics, you know, yeah. you're going to struggle. You, and, and uh, you know, it, it, you just are. I mean, for Christ's Well, the, the problem you've got, James, is that, you know, a lot of people obviously leave a style for one reason or another. They might not like the people they're training with. They might not like the instructor. The instructor mm. might not like them, get rid of them. I don't know. And for, for any reason, they might just move home and start another mm. style. But, but the, for the people who decide that they don't like the style and decide to go elsewhere or they don't like the people they're training with in other words they, they don't have any respect for anyone and they just decide to go off and do another style then they start learning a completely alien style thinking that it's going to add to their repertoire and yeah. then they do another style and another style or a little bit from here a little bit from there what you want to call cross training if you want oh. but not for fighting purposes just simply to learn new forms and you know yeah. a different weapon and all that yeah. they're going to be so confused and and and, and it actually it doesn't make them better it actually makes them worse they actually deviate from the process of learning in order to find new ways of learning and it, yeah. it, it doesn't work like that you can't do that well, you if you've got a scientific basis in the first place right and you yeah. know it works and you have confidence in it and you train it then and you and, and obviously you've you know it works because you've been there so long and you understand it works and you've practiced it because remember in lao we don't just fight each other in lao we go to other competitions and fight in other competitions and obviously some of us are unlucky enough if you like to do self-defense and it, and it seems to work it's okay okay and if it don't get back to the drawing board and find out why but we we've got to know at the at the basic start of the drawing board that the technique has to work that's why you've got to ask these questions that's why you've got to practice forms as if you were mm -hmm. fighting and and use the techniques yeah, but, and well, split the the sets apart well, but mean, where i'm where i'm well, just trying to finish yeah. hang on i'm just i'm gonna I'm lose my track Go as you i'm on a roll yeah so obviously these people go off and they learn these new things they know they had a good basis in the first place they start learning things that mean absolutely no sense to them the only reason they stay there is because they think well i know a lot of stuff that these people don't know so that gives me kind of authority that gives me some prestige in this situation so they still think they're going to be respected because they have knowledge that the people they've just joined don't yeah and so and and the unfortunate thing is they they still have to learn the new stuff but half the time they're going what the hell is this about yeah. i don't i don't even like this and it's very very difficult for them and the, what i call them when they leave the style i have always called students who leave the style and go to another star i've called them the walking dead right yeah. and the reason i call them the walking dead is because they can't come back and they can't go forwards they are just in limbo mm. because there's no way they'll ever be able to understand that the new thing without re recognizing the benefits of the old i mean it's quite presumptuous of you if i'm playing devil's advocate to assume yeah. that lao is uh, is 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 the finest style out there i mean you know the way you talk about it it's like uh -huh. you're saying well they can go to this style but it won't be as good or, or this style won't be as good what gives you the the authority if you like I, i'm not talking about loud but it, no, 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 make no, those I, claims. I, I, yeah i understand that totally but uh 41 years i guess <laughs> 41 years of watching these styles grow and die right okay 
and recognizing that when you have done Lao and you have a genuine teacher and you have genuine information and you have a genuine uh, reason for doing things and you purposefully discover that these things work and then you watch other martial arts and you watch other people come into your clubs from other martial arts and dictate this and, and you know um, dispute that and dispute the other and, oh yeah, yeah yeah I had one guy he'd come from Taekwondo and he says uh, I says what's the fastest thing a punch or a kick and he went oh a kick I says so you think you can get your foot seven feet from the back end <laughs> of your foot back end of your your stance to my head before I can jab you mm. and he went yeah <laughs> I said go on then he did the kick and I punched him three times <laughs> by the time <laughs> his leg came up it, it just absolutely ridiculous the way people can think and and so I guess I haven't got authority I've only got opinion mm. uh, a bit of and, but my opinion well. is based on facts so you know and, and of course there will be people that will come from these styles because they're genuine genuinely enthusiastic about finding out what works and what doesn't so a lot of them actually learn new styles but don't actually learn the style they yeah. just learn to punch and kick why do you think most martial artists when they leave turn into kickboxers yeah. why do you think everybody who leaves lao no longer does the the, the, the forms, sets yeah, the, the forms the in the way detail, that they're supposed yeah. to do and they end up starting doing kickboxing so they start calling it kickboxing why do you think that happens yeah. because they can't remember the moves and they haven't got the quality of knowledge to pursue them yeah. Right. I think it's just the thing with kickboxing though it's a very sort of uh, you, you can see it's, it satiates the, the, the all your needs in a martial art in, yeah. in one sort of package if you like because yes, from does. the off you know you're sparring you're trying to hit someone they're trying to kick you you're trying to defend it you're trying to counter and it kind of <laughs> feels it it, it 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 feels just like real you think oh this is this is how it would be then this is it yeah, and yeah, yeah, it would be it, it would be if you had the distance and the ability to move but as, as you know what they say most fights end up on the on the ground mm -hmm. well that's true and if you're throwing punches and if punching someone can grab you but you don't have a perception of your your stance you don't understand how to make very close quarter fighting techniques or or shapes with your an anatomical yeah. you know makeup to be able able to change the other person's anatomical makeup or you can't you know understand the feel of someone touching your mm. arm so you quickly grab all of it with your wrist with your other hand and turn it into a lock as quickly as you can as you can feel the way that, that the anatomy is moving mm. that is where the forms come in that's where they come to play it's it's the it's the no man's land between standing there and throwing punches as a kickboxer yeah. and lying on the floor trying to survive as a grappler. That's really it's good. that middle. The no man's land. Yeah. Yes. Like it's the bit that you will have to do when you suddenly realize someone's grabbed your arm and you can't punch anymore. Yeah. What happens to boxers, James, when they're in a ring and they can no longer fight? They, they they're clinch. finding it hard. They, they clinch. clinch yes but they can't throw each other down mm. although you know when they're not in a ring and they have these arguments <laughs> just before the fight they do end up on the floor you know they punch a few punches the next thing you know is they're on the ground because there's no middle ground there's no ability wait a minute oh he's got my arm if i just rot rotate my arm like that now i'm now on top of him and he's underneath me oh if i hold on to that hand as i do it his wrist will twist and if his wrist twists i've got I, him in a lock he's going to be in pain be, so uh, yeah. it's these things i just like you talked about no man's land i never really considered that but when i did when i did a bit of uh, judo training with the guys in the army yeah we'd always used to do uh, you know you start off on your knees on the mats and roll and all that no obviously no striking it's judo yeah and uh, i remember you know th in that moment you know after they said go and, and you, you you've grabbed them you've got them i remember thinking in my mind i came over quite calm because i'm i, I remember thinking i'm totally aware of where all my appendages are right now mm -hmm. i'm totally aware that your head is like six inches from mine and my fingers could go in your eye i could you know head button eggs yeah all that and it and it and i'm not professing to be any you know great fighter i'm just saying it i i, I had awareness of it and it's yeah. that awareness that i think keeps you calm in between yeah but you can you can you know like i think that's 
something lacking if if you're just training say say judo and there's nothing wrong with judo i do i do like watching just judo right that's fine but if yeah. you're just training that you, you 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 tend to have you get lulled into a false sense of security right with these things yeah. because you're like well i can't hit them i can't bite them i can't freaking you know you know squeeze their eyeball and pop it you know and whatnot so uh, so i'm limited as to what i can do but you know you, at the same time uh you know, you've got to recognize that there is this no man's land. I really like that, what you said yeah. there. Yeah, right. Well, you've got to think that, of course, what they say is um, all plans go to pot as soon as oh, you know, no action plan, starts. No plan survives yeah, contact. There's no yeah. plan, exactly. So how far can you take that? You've got a plan at the beginning. You've got a strategy at the beginning. Okay. Yeah. So in other words, oh, he's coming at me. I think I'm going to throw a punch. I've decided if he comes any closer, I'm going to throw a punch at him or it's just an automatic response, mm, yeah. which it can be. I, I remember doing it when I was 16 yeah. in the Navy. I had a guy, you know, uh, accused me of nicking so many thousand yen was by Japan. And uh, yeah, he tried to, uh, he was 32 years old. I was 16 years old. And he, he, he just came, you know, into my cabin and says, oh, you've done this and done that and whatever. And, and without me even thinking, my fist was in his face i just punched him straight in the face <laughs> and then he fell on the floor crying oh. and then i was on top of him then i went upstairs to the to the bridge and i says to the second mate uh, i says uh, what do you do when someone comes up into your house into your cabin and, and accuses you of nicking so many thousand yen and this guy and, and the <laughs> it was funny thing because the, the second mate he says uh, he says oh you hit him and i went <laughs> I says I did and I lifted up my arm and my sleeve was all it had blood all down my sleeve and he looked at it you should have seen his face and he came he says oh, oh let's go down and we went downstairs I'd locked him in my cabin so we couldn't nick anything of mine and we went down there he was with a bloody nose and you know he's going this that and the other we went to his room lifted up his pillar there was his money oh in his own right, he's just yeah. drunk I think yeah. he was drunk I don't know he didn't appear to be he might have been high yeah. but uh, anyway that's a little story but 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 the thing is you see like I said it's an automatic response isn't it sometimes it's an automatic response yeah. and if you yeah. can train like that it will be an autom that was just in my nature I don't know why yeah, I don't but, know why you, you mentioned planning before and you yeah. just casually skipped it by so we've got to establish as a no no I was going to come back to it oh, right, okay yeah right. I was going to come back cool. to it because you do have a strategy and that strategy ends as soon as the fight doesn't go your way yeah. so if you're a puncher and a kicker and you like punching and kicking and suddenly the guy grabs you just like an MMA fight and he gets you down on the ground that's you now you've got a problem you've got to fight his way mm -hmm. you've got to get out of it so but what if you trained to be understand the concept of the grab when someone grabbed you what right. if you were capable of throwing punches but they were able to grab hold of the punch what do you do with that hand then you follow it and you follow the, you follow a line like sticky hands yeah. you no longer see it you now feel it that's why so sticky hands is so important because you you throw a punch suddenly feel someone you wrap your hand and suddenly change your anat anatomical you know um position of yeah. your, your arms yeah. and it makes it much more difficult for them to pull or grab or push and of course you've got your footwork so immediately you feel them pushing you change your footwork mm -hmm. they become thrown they yeah. become pulled they become pushed and and that's what you've got to do so it's all about it's it's a nature that you have to develop not not a oh i'm going to do this technique or that technique if he yeah. does this he does that that's for later mm -hmm. you know one of the things i always say to people is there's no such thing as uh oh shit, i've completely forgotten it now <laughs> Hard known the soft ones. that's thank you thank that was you. raquel that's the welsh one. we've we've talked about that's this right before. yes and that's right no good. such thing as hard men just soft ones thank you thank you for saving my bacon there james <laughs> thank god i taught you that <laughs> because i thought raquel welsh was great yeah, <laughs> in a thousand and one, uh, one million years bc oh, yeah, I'll uh, but no she was in a movie in a in a cowboy movie or something mm -hmm. she was out for revenge and the, everyone thought she was going to get you know done in and you know they says oh this guy's tough guy he's gonna you're gonna go for him he's gonna kill you or whatever and she says there's no such men it's thing as hard men just soft ones <laughs> in other words meaning of course that you think someone's harder than you it's it's not true it's because you're softer than them yeah. that's what she meant by it now I'm not saying that's true for everybody um, but you'll find that mm. you know cowards are the people that talk about it afterwards I would have done this I would have done that yeah they're, they're the people that shout you know 
and blaspheme and, and sort of being credulously you know heroic when they're standing on a balcony shouting down at you but as soon as you go up to the balcony they they want to make friends yeah yeah, you know, and and that happened to me as well. Oh, because <laughs> my I, that I, dog, I, my Alsatian yeah. killed a dog, yeah. <laughs> and my neighbour's dog, my, my Alsatian <laughs> killed a neighbour's dog. Oh my god! And 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 when I went, out, I got home, and and the police were there, and I had to show them all the licences I had for the yeah. dog, which was fine. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> and he and he's there on the top of the balcony, going, "Oh, you're effing this, and you're effing that. We're going to, I'm going to smack you. Come, you know, come up here, and I said, why well, don't you come down here?" And he, and he says, and then I, I actually calmed him right down and, yeah. and told him I would pay for his dog and really sorry and all this kind of thing. And he started off on another one again. Oh, yeah. It ended up going to court actually, and uh, but they never turned up for court. So if they do, they owe us money because <laughs> it was, turned out that his dog was just a bloody pest. Oh, I was going to say, I was at a petrol station, something similar. I was at yeah. a petrol station uh, and I pulled in to the, to the furthest pump. And I, I looked to my right and I said, oh no, the, you know, the diesel's off. So I reversed my car, you know, did all my mirrors and whatnot. <laughs> reversed the car to the first pump, you know, put back. But as I was reversing, there was a car sort of turning in to the, to, to the rear pump. And, uh, you know, I, you know, anyway, I pulled up next to the rear pump. And I could see in my rear view mirror that this guy with his wife just was freaking effing and jeffing and cursing at my car, blah, 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 blah. You know, like almost hitting the steering wheel. I thought, all oh, right, okay. So I got out and I, I walked straight to his driver's window and I said, you're right. And, he, and, and his face just dropped. He said, yeah, I'm fine. I said, I'm sorry about that. I said, yeah, the, the, the front pump diesel is closed down. He went, yeah, no problem. <laughs> but I was like, I was like, I'm not, I just, do you know what I mean? I'll just take it to him because, you know, most mm. people fighting, yeah, you've got to take it say, to him. is 90% yeah. bluff. And it's true, yes. you know. And yes, it like, is. You know, so, but that Absolutely. was funny. It's not because I'm odd. It's maybe because I'm stupid. I, you know, I, just, I you know, I, 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 do, I do. Well, look, you, you, you can know. diffuse it and remember yeah, exactly. he's still in his car. So, yeah, right. you know, if he opened his car, I, I would. Hang on. Uh, what happened to you when you were in a car once? Didn't you pull aside, pull next to someone who was gobbing up? Oh, or yeah, I, I had a lot of road rage experience. You know, people are crazy. <laughs> I remember I'm a truck driver, for yeah. God's sake, so by nature. So I, I, I did, yeah, I, uh, a guy sort of, there was two lanes coming to an island, two lanes around the island, one lane the other end. Yeah. And so basically he come around, he overtook me at the island and then cut in right in front of me, nearly hit the front of my car. So I flashed him and pipped him. And of course he stuck his hands up this that and the other all that lot and started yeah. going crazy and as we got off the road off the island going down the, he sort of slammed his brakes and pulled up right in front of me and i saw him take his seat belt off so as soon as he took his seat belt off all i did was just drive straight around the side and parked right next to his driver's door and he was going ape shit. he couldn't <laughs> he was going crazy and all i did was just i was sitting there and i just turned and looked straight at him and he just didn't know what to do because he couldn't open his car <laughs> simple as that he couldn't open his car oh, he was just going crazy and i just looked at him give him a good stare and then just drove off you know what and bruce, that was the end of that you know what bruce yeah. lee would say that was the yeah. art of fighting without fighting <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I think the majority of, of road rages and things with, I hate vandals, right? And mm -hmm. so I've been in a lot of experiences with vandals where they've been doing something and, you know, it's, it's just been a terrible. And, uh, but I can't stand it. I can't, I just, something happens to me yeah. uh, when I was younger, particularly. And uh, yeah, I, I've been in a lot of situations like that. So it, it's just, it's, it's not about fighting. It's, it's, I find it really much better when you, when you're actually, um, uh, you can end the fight without any fighting whatsoever. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's a, it's a lovely feeling of going. You know what? You know, shut up, yeah. and and that's it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, but you've got to be able to follow it through. A lot of people can talk like that, but you've got to be able to, you know, you know, step up. Um, otherwise, you shouldn't be in that situation because you put yourself yeah. in danger. You put yourself in danger every time. I, I I suppose I told you about the time I parked my bike. And this is this is turning into an anecdotal thing. Is, this is, by the way, <laughs> parked my bike by the Chinese. I, I went in and I got my I ordered my Chinese food. And while I was standing out the side with my push bike, this little mini turned up with three kids in it, right, yeah. similar age to me. Yeah. And they they started walking in. And the last one looked at me and went, "What are you looking at?" 
and and instinctively I just looked at him I says get in the car just like that I says get in that effing car right <laughs> and his mates came back out this the, the his two mates came back out of the of the, uh, the Chinese I says get in the car get in the car right and I was so aggressive and you know what I hadn't got a clue <laughs> I hadn't got a clue what I was doing yeah. so get in the car and then away they all got in the car right and they all they they says you know when they closed the car they went if you want trouble you know where to come like that <laughs> anyway and they drove off and a few minutes later they must have gone what <laughs> They must have suddenly realised what they'd done. And anyway, my Chinese came. I got on my push bike. I started cycling, and there they they are. They turn up right next to me. They jump out of the car, start chasing me, and they were going stop, stop, because they said they they as I was talking to them outside the Chinese, I, I said you know get in the car. And they're going the three of us like that. They said that, and then they got in the car and went. Yeah. And of course, as I was cycling away from them, chasing me, they're going stop, and I says why there's three of you. <laughs> I carried on, but you know, you know what? The end of this story is quite interesting because, and this this is interesting. The the next day, the very next day, I went to the shops, mm. and uh, there's a bus stop right next to the shop. Yeah, and there was one of these kids, oh, right, on his on own. their own. Oh, I love Ooh, that. Oh, oh, it was Divide great. Do you know what? Do you know what I did? So. What I did basically, he must have seen me because he turned his back on yeah. me and, and tried to avoid me recognizing him. Yeah. And he was looking in the window of, of Sainsbury's or, you know, whatever it is, Safeways or something like that. He was looking in the window yeah. and probably watching my reflection to see where I was going. You know what I did? I went and stood next to him, just behind him, and I stared at him at the reflection in the window. Oh. And he was shitting himself. <laughs> he was shit. <laughs> And then I just walked off, oh, <laughs> and that was it. That's funny. all I did. Oh, it was brilliant. Oh, I hate vandals. I hate bullies. I I just can't stand mm. people who just, you know, why why do you want to do that? Why do you want to try to pick on people and fight everyone? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you you're proving nothing. Yeah. You know, so it's not about fighting, but you you it when you argue with someone, it's it's nice to have. A, a backup it's nice to have of course most people argue with people when they've got a friends around their you know yeah, sure. around their yeah. side yeah yeah so, and, and again shall i go into another one or <laughs> oh, oh for god's sake oh. yeah no. i what i wanted to you mentioned cross training earlier on oh yeah uh, but did you know and i only sort of found this out the other day and i don't know have you ever heard of uh baritsu who? Barit no, it's not a who, it's a what. A baritsu. Have you ever heard of it? It's a martial art baritsu. Oh, Christ, I was going to say, I had my first one <laughs> no, here. No, no, no. And they shoot. gave it me for free for $10. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Is so that, that, that was a burrito? Bur bur no, it's a, a burrito. burrito. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, not a burrito, Sorry. man. No, yeah, no, I went in, 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 in Vancouver. No, no, I went no. to Vancouver and I says I've never had one before so you know what's it like what do I do and he went oh it's free to you first time went, oh well oh, yeah. and I got this bloody it. like a dinosaur egg it was <laughs> <laughs> freaking hell like a huge no, dinosaur no, egg no, no, in no, silver no, no. paper hang on, hang on. We're, we're a martial art podcast yeah, okay here. so no, what, what's Gaston, this bloody Lloyd Grossman with the <laughs> world rated cogitated right Baritsu you ever heard of it no what it is I only mm. find out about it the other day oh hang on I'm eating. Uh, swallow, swallow, swallow. Okay, what it is, is allegedly the, the first Western martial art. Mixed martial art. Okay? You uh, mean not like Savat from no, France? No, interestingly <laughs> enough, right? So this Baritsu was invented by a guy called, by a guy called Edward... By a guy called what? No, 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 no. That was a Freudian <laughs> slip. No, listen. Just because he, he had a nice suit, nice clothes and carried an umbrella doesn't make him... Right, listen. It was Edward. It was Victorian, right? And developed by a guy called Edward Barton Wright. Okay, so that's, that's where weird. the Baritsu comes from. And what he did is he combined boxing with Savat, and he travelled to Japan to do judo. And uh, well, so, yeah. okay. Uh, jiu -jitsu, so rather. let so me just stop Baritsu. you right there, James. Oh, yeah. It can't be a Western martial art, can it, if you learned it in Japan? No, <laughs> so. no, 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 but no, it, they, they're saying it's the first time in the West that 
the first it's, it's, Western isn't it, mixed martial Isn't it arts funny, James? Isn't it funny how we've only just heard about it? No. And it was been, been here no. since the 18th century? Well, this is what I was thinking. Now, I'm sure people in the know, like all the historical buffs and that, would have heard about it and know about it, but I just didn't. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. But they teach it to this day. There's like little clubs. Cause they, have you ever heard of HEMA, mm-hmm. like historical European martial arts and stuff? No, like I have, but I have seen the, uh, the Kingsman. Oh, there you go, right. But <laughs> I haven't watched that. Oh, but, but people feel. still train it. And mm. but and the the problem with it is they'll sort of they call boxing pugilism, so they try and glam it up and glitch it up. And the idea is with it, like it's 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 a martial art for the discerning gentleman. Right. Mm-hmm. Um White meaning, colour boxing. Well yes and no, but meaning like uh, a lot of the techniques are like use your pocket handkerchief to throw the into the guy's face while you you know as a distraction to hit him use your umbrella to do this that and the other so it's very much they call it like the victorian gentleman's martial mm. art and uh, yeah i thought i was interested in that but another thing i found out about it was uh, sherlock holmes in in the books arthur conan doyle mm-hmm. um uh, uh, allegedly you know put that right well, if you've seen the films did Baritsu, uh, well, yeah, they, if you've <laughs> seen the films where uh, uh, robert downey jr yeah he, he's he doing did. wing chun he did wing oh, chun he? yeah oh yeah. did he oh, downey right. jr studies wing chun he always he's mm. done that for a while but mm. yeah. but uh, but he really likes his wing chun does, does downey jr mm. um but yeah no i thought i was interested in that i thought oh, mm. that's a bit of a uh, bit of yeah uh, it's interesting history. that you've only you know that that I've never heard the name in all my life yeah. and uh, been interested in martial arts for a long time since mm-hmm. I was 13 years old. Mm-hmm. So um, well, there you that's go. like Plus, fif- yeah. 50 years or so. Right. Nearly 50 years I've been interested in. Never heard of burrito <laughs> <laughs> until I ate one. Taco Bell, you know, from the dojo yeah. Taco Bell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But, you know, people do it and uh, they enjoy it and all that. Well, well good on them. Yeah, yeah. Um, another thing. But, 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 but the argument, I think my argument is, does it matter where the martial art comes from if it's useful right. to you? But And of course, some people will never ever know other martial arts because basically they only ever learn their own martial art and do it for self-defense. Now, if that martial art works for them in self-defense in every aspect, in other words, they're accosted by someone and it, and it saves their life yeah. or it saves their dignity or whatever, then surely that's good enough martial art for them if it works now that is the key word if it works the problem is is when you watch this ball that people profess to be masters and try to teach people even when they know nothing about a- any particular name style mm. uh, or when you see someone going like i saw the other day or oh, learn this in 60 minutes you know uh offense is the best form of defense uh, and then the next thing you got a video of people pulling guns out on them ak-47s in the car park yeah. and then they're de- 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 <laughs> defeating them barehandedly Jesus. with you know knocking the gun out their hand and doing all this and you can learn that in 60 minutes by hey, the way in your own home that's the Mossad shit there yeah well all you've got to do is go out and find yourself a ak-47 and you yeah. and your your quids in <laughs> so you know yeah. these people you know, often these people are like big guys, you know, they go, oh, I'm going to teach you how to do self-defense. Because they look at people, they look down at people, and these people look up at them and think, Jesus Christ, he must be good because look at the size of him and everything. Yeah. And and this is the biggest fallacy of all. If if a little thin guy came up to you and went, I'm going to teach you self-defense, you'd go, yeah, really? And, and okay, if you were prepared to go to his club and then he threw you all over the place, you'd respect him. Oh, yeah. But why do you need to respect a guy who's already capable of of hurting people, irrespective of whether he's learned a martial art or not? Yeah. You know, because of the, his, his genuine his size and his attitude and so yeah. on. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people in bars like that who have never done martial arts, and and you know, they keep themselves to themselves. But uh, you know, it's the bullies that you got to watch for. Oh, for sure. That's why you need martial arts for. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, such is life. Anyway. That's, yeah, I'm no, yeah, well, again. You know, I was going <laughs> to uh, mention that um, we had. I, I was in correspondence with one of our listeners, and a while back when we were talking about um, 
uh, training things on the left. When we were talking about Laugar Lookup Q, mm -hmm. um, and we were talking about, um, you know, when we look to the left. Yeah. And uh, anyway, the, the listener sort of sent me something back, and just I thought I'd just add it in there just for now. And it says, and it says, uh, to continue with the concept of left handedness, I've heard that we look left in, in, in certain forms um, uh, because it was we were trying to train uh, out of being left handed, which was deemed inferior to uh to the right hand so is, is that is that have you ever heard of that like you know, well right-handedness has always been encouraged yeah, i mean but, it's bad luck me, so yeah, each with left hand yeah but with chopsticks for thinking, instance what got me thinking i didn't know that about chopsticks was originally yeah. loads of the forms in lao were added a left hand side weren't they so yes you know that in, certainly yeah because strikes, yeah, yeah because it's not traditionally anymore is it it's 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 modern times as we yeah. say modern we have to move with modern times and there's a lot of left-handed people here because like when i was at school they would you know stick sticks across your hand if you used your left hand to write with they right. would smack your hand and you know maybe just before my time in my time um when i started at school I had a chalkboard. <laughs> I know this is going back. I had a chalkboard. Then I had a pencil. I learned how to sharpen a pencil, but there's pen proper modern pencil sharpener, <laughs> not just a pen knife, but a pencil sharpener, right? That, that turned around and it was stuck on a desk. That was amazing. And, and anyway, after that, I got a, a pen. Yeah. Okay. Which was a dip ink pen. You had to, you had your, yeah. you had your inkwell and your yeah. blotting paper. Yeah. And of course, I was left-handed. I write with my left hand, but my right hand is the strongest, so yeah. I'm kind of caggy-handed. Mm -hmm. So, as I'm writing, of course, I, I, when I finish the page, I look at the writing, and it's just nothing but smudged ink. It's just <laughs> completely, it's gone. <laughs> Everything I've written has gone. Yeah, you so, have to kind of hook over the word, don't you, if you're yeah, left-handed. Right? And if you watch anybody who's left-handed, you'll see that they, they any older person, that is, yeah. who's left-handed, they will actually have their wrist right bent around and yes, twisted yes. so that they're or, or they'd hold the pen in a completely different way because they're trying to avoid smudging the ink yeah yeah and yeah, that so. that is why people write like that when they're left-handed yeah. you know from from my age group yeah. and and so it is quite interesting no, to see that yeah absolutely well, I thought and that of that. course yes it, it was looked down upon to be left-handed and in china same thing no one should be left-handed main reason is you wipe your ass with your left hand <laughs> right. you shake hands with your right yeah. wipe your hand your ass with the left and that's why it's an insult well, to I use can, your left hand for anything I can, I can honestly say after serving in some middle eastern countries and those will remain nameless that that doesn't <laughs> spread across different cultures shall we say no no um, it doesn't <laughs> I tell, i'm not going to shake your hand because i've just watched you do something <laughs> with no toilet roll and cold yeah. water i'm like no yeah. <laughs> but yeah. but you know we dig <laughs> we digress yeah but, uh, well no, i just thought that's that's interesting point that this uh, that our listener sort of uh, added to it and i love we love tidbits <laughs> we love little nerdy nuggets of information so if you've got anything guys send it to us um, <laughs> we are just having conversation we, today aren't we, we we're yeah. just uh, we're nothing special i think you know on the next one we might talk about some more techniques specific <laughs> stuff maybe we'll talk about some uh, weaponry or something which is also yeah we thing. would yeah well we have gone through the knife defense we've gone through yeah. all the basic sets we can yeah. always go through the yeah. stick set if you want oh, well, there's, pl there's plenty more that's, yeah plenty but the more. thing is you see maybe we're just sitting by and waiting for people to you know contradict yeah. us yeah. or uh, write in with well, questions and it, they're so. either all they're either all like ignoring us mm -hmm. or you must be right i don't know which <laughs> well let's listen <laughs> listen uh just a little bit of news if you haven't seen it on the uh lao kung fu podcast Go someone's on. actually stuck well i wouldn't say it was lao but it's it's kind of you know well lao orientated if you like it's about weapons and uh and basically what happened is that andrew nations and uh and rash uh, patel just uh did a little video demonstrating you know we, we a few podcasts back we talked about how flimsy weapons are yeah and so on yeah. and so what um andrew did was he was in front of the video camera and he just swung his um quando. his quando sideways and flat yeah. 
and then showed it the camera and it was bent Oof. he turned it round swung it down again and it came back up straight <laughs> <laughs> you know so if you're going to use the weapon make sure your weapon's solid yeah don't don't use flimsy weapons i mean because they're just so bad i mean I, yeah. that's amazing and, and heavy and weapons say, well are meant to be heavy yeah no it's it's absolutely amazing that the fact that something you know laugar was posted on laugar <laughs> facebook page is just a, a miracle well there's no mention of laugar i have oh, to admit oh, okay but oh, right. but it, it, you know i just associated as laugar because you know andy does laugar and yeah, no, you I'm know rash does laugar I'm so i'm just going oh you know there's something about laugar on there uh, someone with a video doing you know at least yeah. something that might be pertaining to laugar because it didn't do a set or anything with it it just demonstrating how flimsy weapons can be ah, yeah well it's yeah. like you always say. so i'm still waiting for a form or something to come on but well, no one will do a form uh, it, it, on the on the podcast james no one will do a form on it because they know the second someone does something they might have a completely different perception of that the way that form works yeah. than someone else and 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 it and people with a little integrity would turn around and say you know yeah that's interesting that works oh yeah i've never thought of doing that like that or oh, that mm. could work and so on but a lot of people say mm, you know oh that's wrong that's wrong mm. well it's not wrong if it's the same technique just done for a different reason because there are we already know there are thousands of reasons you can do something mm. now the funny thing i had when i first ever stuck something uh kevin uh, out of you know texas midnight runners the guy that had yeah. taught uh, he, he taught for me and uh, bridge north yeah. and he had that video thing he did a few video we did a lot of self-defense videos in yeah. the early days and we've got one where um i'm on a towpath yeah. and uh, you can look it up on youtube yeah, you just go put YouTube. steve newby laugar and it comes up as a as a as this amusing self-defense skit where this young girl is jogging along and i'm a, a baddie and i sort of jump step out in onto the towpath and she uh I try to grab hold of her and as, as I grab her she does a self-defense technique and she throws me into the canal and and people always say to me god you know did you were you worried about bikes and stuff I says oh I didn't get wet I was only acting <laughs> you know but in actual fact I got absolutely bloody soaked and I was scared <laughs> stiff about bikes being in there in fact we 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 looked at the we checked it out for about an hour yeah. looking to see that there was nothing in the water before we started filming and uh, yeah she throws me in the water literally so if you want to see me being thrown in the water in slow motion and you hear the genuine scream of fear as i jump as i fall backwards yeah. into the water anyway i digress again the first person and i don't know if he did lao but i was assuming he i, I do assume he did lao i didn't even answer it you know the usual trolls you get because yeah, i yeah. didn't know how to switch off you know the um whatever it is and um so the first thing he wrote i can't see any loud techniques in that <gasps> you know? wow. and i'm going and i'm looking thinking you On obviously don't know laugar <laughs> yeah you obviously don't know laugar <laughs> because you don't know your laugar yeah because you you're prof professing to say surely lao must work in every other way except that one <laughs> you know so it doesn't work in a situation like that so mm. what are you saying exactly that you have to do other martial arts in order oh. to learn how to you know get out of a grab yeah is that what he's telling me but i think he might be you know cross train you know <laughs> open your mind but yeah well the movie's in fei Lung chi anyway the movie's in fei Lung chi it's just exaggerated in our technique and yeah. and and obviously in fei Lung chi they don't actually grab your lapel or your shoulder which is i did with uh, with joe Mm. Uh, the girl that was in the video mm. and so um you know i grabbed her and she just went under threw her arms over i think you've done a recent self-defense thing yeah I in think so. lockdown I think maybe. lockdown lockdown, lockdown self-defense lockdown, lockdown lessons, lessons. i love go. that <laughs> yeah. look it up on our youtube yeah, yeah. yeah so anyway it's that technique she did it and in back then 1990 something wow. and um yeah it was good i had hair as well by the way so people might not recognize it was the me. radioactive sludge that was in the canal that's probably <laughs> contributed to your hair loss you know yeah did you did you find a, a used condom in your perm after that as no well? but i saw a lock and i saw i saw a knock and and eli they were both they were fishing in in the cut they were fishing <laughs> and they said uh, and, and eli said to anak you know what did you catch he says i caught a whale he says what did you do a whale wow what did you do with it he says well i threw it back he said why'd you throw the whale back he says well because it had no spokes in it <laughs>
<laughs> oh, for Christ's sake, listen. Yeah, for like, people who don't understand black country language, what, it's why, real, okay? Why, yes. <laughs> anyway, we can we can we can really blitz the West Country uh, slang. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching and uh, not watching, bloody hell, Ooh, listening to the, to us. Uh, you know, go on again. We'd really like to send out our thanks to all our listeners, and uh, we appreciate you taking time out of your day and uh, just downloading our podcast. All the rest of it. Um, we'd love it if if you could it's a big if if you could go to our YouTube subscribe to us or subscribe to us on Podbean or indeed go to our Facebook give us a like and guys as always we 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 exist to have your questions and input in the show we really want that so we're trying got, to also go on. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry I was going to no, say no, we're trying it. to get this uh, Patreon going right um, with the uh, correct with proper lessons starting from the basics right the way through the basics mm. and hopefully people might be interested in yeah. and help us along with a, with a bit of patreon yeah. or you know patronage or whatever yeah. i don't know how it works so i'm leaving all the technology to anyone who helped me um, but basically it's just trying to get some good videos off and we'll put small snippets of that video on uh, you yeah. know facebook or on uh, youtube and then we'll have the whole lesson uh, as, a, as a, yeah and if you if you do subscribe then you'll be able to watch the lessons and but also of course i will answer you by video and uh, and also even uh, time with video the only problem of course is i'm eight hours um behind you so your morning would be my afternoon or my mm -hmm. afternoon would be your what would it be no, <laughs> your evening yeah. our evening will be your morning pretty much yeah yeah pretty so, much yeah eight so, hours so but, but it, it is possible it yeah, is possible absolutely. i do i do lessons now with people in england yeah. so there's no reason why yeah. i can't do it oh it, it's and of course we're talking now yeah of course of even course. though probably what time is it now five ten so what, right Ooh. now what would it what time is it there oh god it's ten past one in the morning ten past one in the yeah. morning yeah yeah okay but, you know, so I've got nothing else to do old man you know? <laughs> but uh, guys so there you go there's an option that's coming that's that's up and coming is uh, the the sort of uh, the lessons the video lessons on patreon and all the rest of it but as steve mentioned if you've got something quick you just want to you know ask no problem we'll do our best to get a video out to you and we'll give us uh, you know a different opinion on it or whatnot we're all you know hey you send us stuff you tell us we're wrong that's perfect as well whatever yeah. you know let's spark debate but in the meantime guys thank you so much for joining us um and uh, from me james still i'd like to say a big thank you and goodbye and from the old man in uh, in mountain yeah. country who's losing it because he's just constant constantly talking about the old days <laughs> yeah, during the war during the i'm war. reminiscing <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm reminiscing. Yeah. <laughs> well take care guys all the best bye 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 Your little Beijing ass right now, man. I ain't scared of you. I know you know that little tricky shit. Come on. Hi guys, thanks so much for joining us on the Kung Fu Podcast. If you like that and you want to find out more about us, you can head over to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube and find us under SJN Martial Arts. And also, guys, this podcast is available on Podbean and iTunes. So until next time, take care of yourselves and we'll see you again on the Kung Fu Podcast. Guns. Now, why doesn't somebody pull off forty five and bang, settle it? No, no guns.